Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 58, where we're going to discuss Henry Cavendish. And what Henry Cavendish did was he was actually able to measure the mass of the Earth. This he did in 1798. Now, what we were able to do when we had Newton's law of universal gravitation is not actually have an equal sign. It was a proportionality because Newton was never able to determine the constant that related the masses and the distances between them. And remember, the masses, masses were a direct relationship, and the radii, or the distance between the objects, was an indirect square relationship. Well, Henry Cavendish came along, and in 1798, he was able to determine the value of g. Now, the value of g is very small, and it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. Now, that small number accounts for the fact that objects are able to be attractive to one another over large distances. Now, the way he was able to do this is he set up a device where he took a long bar and he hung it on a string connected to the ceiling. Near the bar, he had two masses, two heavy masses, and on the ends of the bar were very light masses. And what he was able to do is time the oscillations of those masses on the bar um, as they were attracted to the other masses. Now, he had to do this in painstaking detail, but ultimately he was able to determine the value of g. Once that was found, he, he was able to find the mass of the Earth. Now, the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24, and this was determined in 1798, as I said. Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation was, was published in 1687. So there was just a proportionality for 111 years. So what Newton was able to do was find the relative value of forces between sets of objects, always having this unknown constant in the way. But then Henry Cavendish came along and he was able to find the value for g and turn that proportionality into an equal sign. And now if we want to find the value between any two objects in the universe, we can merely multiply the value of big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, times the two masses involved, and then divide that product by the distance between the objects squared. And that will allow us to find the force of gravity between any two objects. What I like to do at this point is actually calculate um, a value or two of the force of gravity between objects using Newton's law of universal gravitation with g involved. And these values are going to be listed as Newtons. So when we calculate the force of gravity between any object, we're going to be able to find the force in the metric system, so Newtons. So let's take out the whiteboard and let's do some practice problems now. Let's find out how attractive two people really are. We'll take two people and we'll have them stand a meter apart. And we'll say that this person is 55 kilograms and this person is 60 kilograms. So the question is, how attractive are these people? Well, we can find that using physics. FG the force of gravitational attraction is big G, m, m over R squared. Well, big G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. The mass is 55, and the mass is 60. We divide all of that by 1 meter squared. Now, that being said, you do 6.67 EE negative 11 times 55 times 60, and then you divide that by 1 squared, and of course you don't really need to divide by 1 squared, but you get force of attraction between them is 2.2 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. Now, if we write that out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2, 2 newtons. 
Now, don't let anyone say that you're not attractive because you have a gravitational attraction no matter what. But this value is not very big, so it's not going to account for too much in terms of getting prom dates or dates of any sort. So you're probably going to have to work on your social skills a little bit as well. Now, throughout the course, we've been using 9.8 for the acceleration of gravity on the Earth. And we've said that G is 1.63 on the Moon. So this is the Earth, and this is the Moon. Now, these numbers stem from Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. And because the equation is big G, m, m over r squared, any object that we have a force of gravity for, which is mg, that would equal g, m, m over r squared. And if this was the mass of the object, mo we'll call it, and this is the mass of the Earth or the Moon, the o term would disappear. So if you want to find g for any object, you would use big G, m over r squared. And that could get you the value for G for any planet, moon, the sun, whatever, whatever celestial body or any object, in fact. Now, that being said, it's going to be a lot easier to calculate it when we know little g by just taking the mass of the object and multiplying it by that value. So what we've really done all year is used 9.8 for this when in fact it stems from this uh, larger equation. So let's find G and verify the two values. Now G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. The mass, and we'll, we'll start with the Earth, mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the radius of the Earth is 6.4, times 10 to the 6 meters, and we have to square it. Now, the hardest part of this is dealing with the calculator, and you have to use that EE button, 6.67, second EE, negative 11, times 5.98 EE, 24. I'm going to hit equal now, divided by 6.4 EE, 6, squared. And I have, for G, 9.74 meters per second squared. Now you may be asking, why is this not 9.8? Well, keep in mind that the 5.98 is rounded and the 6.4 is also rounded. So when we get the mass of the Earth and radius of the Earth, we're not using very precise values for them. When this value is calculated for our use in every problem we do, they use more precision, and that value becomes closer to 9.8. Now for the moon, same process. It's G equals 6.67, 10 to the negative 11, Newton meter squared over kilogram squared. The mass of the moon is 7.4 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. And then we divide that by the radius of the moon, which is 1.74 times 10 to the 6 meters, that whole quantity squared. Now when we multiply, we have 6.67 EE negative 11 times 7.4 EE 22 divided by 1.74 EE 6 squared, and I get 1.63 meters per second squared. Now, obviously, since we use 1.63 as our value, that these are rounded less than the values for the Earth. But that's how you find G for any object. You need big G, which is a universal constant, the mass of the object, and the radius of the object. So you could figure out the G of any object that you care to find. For our next problem, let's look at a hydrogen atom, and we have a proton in the nucleus, and we have an electron 
out on the outer edge of the atom itself. And let's just use one angstrom as our distance because that's a standard atomic radii. In this case, the proton is going to have a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. It's quite small. Mass of the electron, however, is even smaller, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. 10 to the negative 27, 10 to the negative 31, or about 3 or 4, it's 4, it's 10,000 in terms of the difference, but because this is a 9 and that's a 1, it's about a 1,000 times bigger. Well, can we find force of gravity? Big G, M, M, R squared. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 Newton meters squared over kilogram squared times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms over one angstrom. Now, what's an angstrom? Well, it's 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. The angstrom replaces the 10 to the negative 10 and the meters, so it's a double, uh, it does double duty, but you have to square it. So let's find FG between them. 6.67 E negative 11 times 1.67 E negative 27 times 9.11 E negative 31. We get a really small number divided by 1 e negative 10 squared. And we have a less small number than the first, but 1 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons. So although there's gravitational attraction between the proton and electron, it's the electrostatic attraction that's really going to play a larger role in atomic um, stability. So gravity does exist, but it's a very small number. We're talking about 46 zeros, decimal place, 46 zeros, and then a 1. So 46 of those. That's quite a bit. But we can calculate it using our big G equation. So you can find the value of the attraction between any two objects in the entire universe, even objects as small as a proton and an electron.